Okay, in this video, you're going to learn about App Storage. It's a special property wrapper in Swift UI, which allows you to store a value app wide. If you're familiar with user defaults, it's basically using user defaults for iOS. If you're not familiar with user defaults, don't worry about it. I'm just going to strictly stick with App Storage as a Swift UI topic. Now, I have this little app here to demonstrate to you how App Storage works. Once you create an App Storage property, you can then access that value from anywhere else in the app. So I have a little uh, three screen app here and I just have view one, I can navigate to view two and navigate to view three. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an app storage on view one and then go to view three to access that value. So let's start by actually creating our app storage property here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the at app storage property wrapper right here, and then you can see here that it requires some kind of key to keep track of this value. It's sort of like a dictionary, right? It has a key and a value pair. So we need to define a key for this. So I'm creating a key called person, and that's what this value is, person. And then we wanna create a variable to represent that so we can access the value like that. Okay, you're gonna get an error if you leave it like this. First of all, it needs to know what type you're storing in app storage. Storage can be any value type. That means it can be a string, an int, a double, basically anything that's not a class, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to default this to my name, Mark. Okay, that's fine. We can resume this and we're not really going to see any change here. We're not displaying this value. So let's go down into our view and actually display which value we have selected here. Okay, and then if I want to access that value, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to access that person variable. Okay, so as you can see from the preview over here, it's showing mark. And that's what I have it defaulted to. Now, what happens if we want to access this value on a different screen? Well, you might think you can just maybe copy it like this. And we'll go down to view three here. Let me just collapse view two. We're not really going to use that. Go down to view three. And we're like, oh, maybe we can just access the variable like this. You know, we have the key. What else do we need? <laughs> well, you can see it's still giving us an error, right? And it needs to know what type it is again. So what we can do is, is we just need to give it some kind of type. So we can maybe try to give it a string like this. And will that work? No, it won't. <laughs> it still needs a value. And specifically what it's looking for here, it needs to know the type. But more importantly, it needs to know a default value if this key does not exist. So it doesn't know that we have this code up here, right? This is just an independent screen. It doesn't know if this key exists yet. So it needs a default value. So maybe you think, well, I can just leave it at empty string, right? And it will use an empty string. And we know this exists because we declared it up here, right? But this is a red flag, and this is something I wanted to really emphasize to you guys here. First of all, let me show you what happens. Oh, you know, we need a way to show that value down here too. So let's go down here and we'll add that. Okay, now you see here, of course, it's still working. It's still showing mark. And we navigate to view two. And now when I navigate to view three, what do you suspect we're going to see? App storage value mark, right? Well, look what happens. There's nothing there. So why isn't there something there? This is the red flag that I want to show you guys. What's happening is this is a little misleading. This, like I told you before, is the default value that it's going to use if the person key does not exist in app storage. And because we're so used to defining default values for variables that this looks totally normal for us. And we automatically think, well, Mark is going to be assigned a person, which is going to update this key, but it's not true for app storage. What's actually happening here is the key is not even getting created. <laughs> and so when it accesses person down here, it's accessing this variable and this key does not even exist. It doesn't even have this value. What you'd have to do is actually explicitly set that value in code you have to explicitly set person in code, which will then create the key and assign the value to that key. So here's what we need to do. Let's create a button to do this. We'll say set app storage like that. We'll add some code for this button. And we're basically going to say person 
equals, and it's a string, it has to be a string, and we'll use the name Scott. Okay, so if we resume this here, we see it's Mark, and that's the default value. And before we do anything, let's go back to view three. We still notice there's nothing there, right? But if we set the app store, it's going to change it to Scott. And now that key has been created. It's actually in app storage. And if we go back to view three, we notice it's set here now. Now remember this declaration right here, this is still the default value. So I can have another name in there too, right? I can have Chris, but it's not going to use that. Because these values right here, where it says equals Mark and equals Chris are only used if the key does not exist. So we go to view three and it's still Scott. It's not using Mark, it's not using Chris because that key exists. By the way, I just want to take a minute to let you guys know that I do have some resources on my website. So if you're interested in Swift UI or you're getting started with Swift UI, I have reference materials that go along great with any course that you do out there on the web. There's plenty of great courses out there that you can do. And if you want a reference that you can go back to after you're done doing these courses, then I have a few books that you can choose from that cover Swift UI views, animations, and Swift UI data. Okay, let's go back to talking about app storage. So I think this is very important for you guys to know this because it is misleading. It's a little bit different because we're so used to declaring variables with default values that we think automatically, oh, this variable is going to equal mark. And that means it's going to create a key and it's going to assign it this value as well. That's not what happens with app storage. Now, if this declaration seems a little bit too confusing for you and misleading, which it can be, then I'd like to suggest a different initializer for app storage, something that will do the exact same thing. So let me show you that declaration, app storage. And then what you're looking for is one that has wrapped value, this one right here. And as you can see, the keys are all strings, string, string, string for the keys, but the wrapped value has different types. And these are the allowed types for app storage. So we want this one right here, where we're going to have a wrapped value for string. Okay, now that wrapped value, that is the default value. So again, we can use a default value here. We can set it to mark if we want, and the key will be the same. We'll set it to person. Okay, now we still need to create a variable for this. So we can say var person like that. And let me just comment out this one up here. Okay, and that should work fine. Let's resume this. All right, and again, it's still using Scott, right? Because this wrapped value right here, this parameter, that is the default value if the key does not exist. Now, I think it'd be even more clear <laughs> if, if maybe instead of wrapped value, it said default value if key does not exist. <laughs> it's kind of a long label name, right? But it's very explicit. It, it's telling you exactly what's going to happen. But for now, we're we just have wrapped value. So just know that wrapped value is a default value if the key doesn't exist, but it still will not set or create that key unless you do some kind of code like this where you actually set it. This is where the key is actually getting created down here. Okay, so that's how app storage works. And that is how you access these keys in your app storage later on in your app. You can declare it this way if you want, or you can declare it the way we have it up here. To me, I think if you use this initializer, it'll help avoid confusion you know, as opposed to this declaration up here, which kind of makes it look like the key is getting set with this part right here where you say equals some value. And that is it for app storage.